Hey guys, welcome back to Gaming Through the Decades. Do you even lift, bro? What is up, guys? This is John with Gaming Through the Decades, and we are back with another pickups video. And it's been an interesting couple weeks since the last video. I've got some pretty decent games. Uh, I had the opportunity to do a trade with a fellow YouTuber and uh, stumbled across, uh, across a pretty good console score, so uh, let's go ahead and check it out. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about a trade that I did with a fellow YouTuber whose uh, name is Down Phoenix, and I will go ahead and uh, link his channel below here. So if you want to find out what he got, uh, you're going to go ahead and you're going to have to go ahead and check his video that I'll have linked below. But I'm gonna go ahead and talk about what I got. And um, I got three NES games for the trade. Two of them are two games that I um, need to complete a, a series that I'm going for. And the next one is, the, the other one is one I've never really played too much of before. I played it briefly as a kid, didn't really like it um, back then. So I'm gonna go ahead and replay it. Maybe I'll enjoy it a lot more as an adult, but the first one is um, the original Castlevania on the NES. The original Castlevania was released for the Nintendo Entertainment System in May of 1987. The game takes place in the year 1691 where players control protagonist Simon Belmont who is tasked with defeating the vampire Dracula. Now, I grew up playing Castlevania II Simon's Quest, and uh, with how cryptic that was, and how difficult it was, um, I never really got into the other ones as a kid. I only ever played the second one, although I really did enjoy the second one, even though it was very hard, but uh, I am going for a full Castlevania set, so that's why I wanted to go ahead and get this. And then the next one, obviously, since I'm going for the set, I do have all three now on the NES. Uh, Castlevania III, Dracula's Curse. Castlevania III, Curse of Dracula is the third installment in the Castlevania series and was released for the Nintendo Entertainment System December 22nd of 1989 in Japan with a September 1st, 1990 North American release. Unlike the first and second, this is a new protagonist who is Trevor Belmont, an ancestor of Simon. All right, so this next game, like I said, one I didn't really enjoy um, as a kid, but maybe as an adult, I can look back on it and uh, started to play it a little bit and I do enjoy it so far. And man, it's a classic, but it is a Complete in-box Zelda 2, The Adventures of Link. And, um, you know, the box is in okay shape. It's what I expect a, you know, 25-year-old game to be in. But, um, I mean, it's complete. It's got the case. It's got the manual. It even has that um, styrofoam piece in the bottom. Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link is an action role-playing video game with platforming elements. It is the second installment in the Legend of Zelda series and was developed and published by Nintendo for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The initial release date was January 14th of 1987. So yeah, I am happy to have this. Um, it's actually my only NES um, complete inbox game so far. I don't go for complete inbox games for the NES just because I, I don't mind the, the cartridges, they're, they're bigger cartridges, and um, you know, the artwork on the cartridges are nice. It's not like a, a small, loose Genesis um, cartridge that doesn't stack quite as nicely. The loose NES games stack nicely, so I'm never really looking for complete NES games, to be honest with you. 
Okay, so next, um, I got a couple Goodwill finds here. This was just a uh, Goodwill I had stopped out on the way home from work. It was on a Saturday, so they had their half off. So I got each of these for a dollar, uh, which is really nice because these actually are pretty decent games. Um, and the first one's a Dreamcast game, which is crazy because um, I almost never find Sega Dreamcast games at Goodwill, and I figured I'd go ahead and grab this for a dollar, and that is the classic Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six is a media franchise created by American author Tom Clancy about a fictional international counter-terrorist unit called Rainbow. The franchise began with Tom Clancy's novel, Rainbow Six, which was adapted into a successful series of video games. Never really played too much of Tom Clancy's. I remember it coming out for, I, I believe it did come out for the PS1 and I always wanted it and just never, just never really played it. So um, when I get some free time, um, that will definitely be added to the backlog. Uh, the next game is another classic. Uh, it is a green label, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. The Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 is the second installment in the Tony Hawk Pro Skater series. The second one had an initial release date of September 20th of 2000. Platforms included PlayStation, N64, and even the Game Boy Advance. Actually never played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, played the ever-loving crap out of the first one uh, for the PS1 and um, it'll be interesting to uh, just throw this in every now and then, it's a good throwing game as I like to say, so um, not for a dollar you can't beat it. Alright and this next one is another sports title but an awesome series for the PS1 and this one is Cool Borders 4. Cool Borders 4 was the fourth installment in the Cool Borders video game series. The developer was Idle Minds, and it was a PlayStation exclusive. Cool Borders 2 and 3, now I have 4, might as well go ahead and get 1, so I'll go ahead and keep an eye out for that one as time goes on. Uh, the next one is a game I've never played uh, for a dollar, I figured I would go ahead and check it out. Uh, it is a well-known game, and that is The Italian Job for the PS1. The Italian Job is a racing video game released in 2003 by Eidos Interactive. Uh, the game is loosely based on the film of the same name. Initial release date was June 25, 2003. Platforms included PlayStation, PS2, the GameCube, and Xbox. Next game, um, I had some trade-in credit, um, and I didn't want to use it all on one game or most of it on one game, but I've noticed some PS1 titles really starting to rise um, that aren't RPG titles, and this is one of them that is starting to go up. So I figured I'd go ahead and grab it now, use some trade-in credit, and that is Medieval 2 for PS1. Medieval 2 is a PlayStation exclusive, as in an action-adventure hack-and-slash video game developed by SCE, Cambridge Studio, and published by Sony Computer Entertainment. The initial release date was April 19, 2000, and was the second installment in the Medieval series. Now I do have Medieval 1, I'm in the process of playing through it, it is an incredibly one of my favorite series on the PlayStation, um, at least the first one, I've never played the second one so I can't really say if it's one of my favorite actually, uh, but I really do enjoy the first one, 
I'm pretty sure I'll enjoy the second one because from what I hear, it's uh, just as good, if not better, than the first one. They, they went ahead and from what I know, polished uh, a lot of what was wrong with the first one and improved it on the second. So I'm excited to play this. And if you're one of those collector elitists, it's black label, so give me a thumbs up for that. As I mentioned before, I am going for a Castlevania, at least a full console Castlevania collection. And um, this game gets a lot of hate. And I played it, played about the first two hours of it. And um, you know, I don't mind it. And that is Castlevania 64. Castlevania 64 was the Nintendo Castlevania exclusive for the Nintendo 64, with the original release date in Japan of March 11th of 1999. Castlevania 64 is the first 3D game in the Castlevania series. Reviews on this game are absolutely horrific, um, but you know, I'll be honest with you, uh, I don't think it deserves as much hate as it gets. You know, you have to remember something, this is a 5th gen game, uh, they were really just starting, de developers were really just getting into 3D, so there was a lot they didn't know. Um, so things like camera angles are going to be a huge problem in a lot of 5th gen games. And even like games like Mario 64 suffers from you know some camera angle problems. Uh, that's one of the issues in this game, and it does make the platforming a little difficult. Uh, but overall, I mean, it's a Castlevania game. It's 3D. It's a fifth gen, and you know fifth gen stuff just hasn't aged well. But it's not a terrible game. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play through this one. It was a little frustrating at some of the early on platforming parts. So I, I really do understand where the hate's coming from, but. Um, I think it's one of those games that it's been, it's become kind of cool to hate. But, um, I mean, it's not a great game, but it's not the worst game ever. So, leave it at that. Alright, so the next game is a first party uh, Nintendo 64 game. And man, I used to play the crap out of this game with, with kids or with my friends when I was younger. And we used to just all night playing this, and it's just a fun game. Uh, recently. You know, played it the other evening on a, uh, had a little, uh, few friends over for a couch night because you got to still have one of those every now and then. And that is Mario Golf for the N64. Mario Golf is a sports game developed by Camelot Software, planning and published by Nintendo for the Nintendo 64 in 1999. In the game, Mario, his friends, and his enemies play golf on a variety of Mario themed courses. The initial release date was June 11th of 1999. Platforms included in the N64, Game Boy, Wii, and Wii U. All right, this next pickup is a console find. Yes, I found more hardware at a thrift store, and it wasn't a Goodwill, which is cool. It was a local thrift store that I'd never really heard of before, and it has a there, the, they support a good cause, and um, I just happened to be driving home from work, I believe it was Friday, and saw it, and I was like, you know what, I might as well stop, and I'm glad I did, because uh, there was two of them sitting there, and uh, they had them marked at 45, but she said any of the electronics were half off, so I got this for $22, and it is a Indigo Nintendo GameCube, and it came with all the hookups, and three controllers. It has one Nintendo controller and two um, third-party controllers, but they're good controllers. And um, it was taped up like crazy, like it was ready to be shipped overseas. And I did come home, I went ahead, and the first thing I always do is pop the lid open. And there was a, I don't know if you can see that, but Mario Kart Double Dash. There was a Mario Kart Double Dash inside the console when I brought it home. So I got Mario Kart Double Dash, uh, three controllers, and the console for $22. And um, it's, it's funny, I always hold off on buying hardware. And this is the reason why. Now you guys might think I'm finding a lot of consoles often, but I'll be honest with you, 
Um, I probably stop 15 times a week and I might find something maybe three times. So it all comes down to the law of averages. The more you stop, the more likely you are to, uh, to find some things. I did get some games um, for the Nintendo GameCube, so let's see what we got for the, uh, my newest addition to the collection, the Nintendo GameCube. All right, so the first one is a classic. I actually did not really enjoy this game as a kid, to be honest with you, or when the, the console first launched. Um, but I did play it the other night and it's kind of fun. I don't know why I didn't really like it, and that is Mario Sunshine. Mario Sunshine is the GameCube exclusive Mario game. It was developed, obviously, by Nintendo, and the initial release date was August 26 of 2002. Unlike your traditional stomping Goomba Mario gameplay, this one takes on a little bit of a different role and equips Mario with a water jetpack that he uses to clean up the island. So Mario Sunshine is really not a bad game. I think it was one of those things, um, you know, I don't know, you really kind of just grow into games as you get older and that's definitely one of them that I'm probably going to enjoy playing. Maybe we just appreciate games more now. Um, that probably has a lot to do with it. Next one is a really cheap um, first party game and that is uh, Wave Race Blue Storm for the GameCube. Wave Race Blue Storm is a jet ski racing game released as a launch title for the Nintendo GameCube on September 14th of 2001. It is a exclusive to the GameCube and is a direct follow-up to Rave Wa Wave Race 64. Finally, the last game. I never heard of this before, but it does go by a different name on the PS2 and Xbox. And so technically this is an exclusive for the GameCube, but not really. And um, it's kind of hard to come across apparently. It's not a rare game. It's nothing phenomenal or expensive, but that is the Nintendo GameCube Spirits and Spells. Spears and Spells is a 2002 platform video game developed by Wanadu Edition. The initial release date was 2002. The game did come out for the PlayStation 2, Game Boy Advance, and GameCube. However, on the PlayStation 2, it went by the name Castle Ween. Never really heard of this game before, but it um, it's like a Halloween game. I mean, you play as this little girl, and you have to go track down your friends on Halloween night. It's got a very Halloween-esque backstory to it. It's a 3D platformer. It's pretty good. It's nothing special. It's nothing you're going to write home about, but um, it's a pretty decent, fun little game, and I'm probably not going to see it very often, so I went ahead and got a good price on it, so figured I'd had to pick it up. All right, so that is my pickups over the last two weeks, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, sorry if I made it too long, but hey, this is a GTDD pickups video, and we gotta have those game clips in there, and I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. Um, let me know if you guys might have any experience with any of these games. Tell me if you've you know played some of these that maybe I haven't before, and let me know what you, th you thought of some of them. But um, until the next video, guys, um, we'll see you on the next one, and take care. Do you even lift, bro?